Welcome back. So this video is going to be a high level overview of how CSS works and what it does. So we won't actually be writing any code until the next lesson and pretty much every lesson from there on out um, covering CSS. But what we are going to do is three important things. Um, we're going to define CSS and talk about the role that it plays, why you use it, what it does. We're going to view some websites that have CSS. We're going to take the CSS away and see how they change. And then we're going to define this general rule that will follow for every CSS line that we write. So let's go ahead and talk about what CSS stands for. Cascading style sheets. So the cascading part we're actually going to come back to in a, uh, a later video. But the style sheets um, is pretty self-explanatory. Remember that CSS is uh, often considered the adjectives or the skin um, where HTML would be the nouns. So HTML is a structure. We want a uh, heading here and a bullet point here. We use CSS to say, make the headings purple and font size 50 pixels and move this down to the bottom and give it a border. Um, so we use it to describe how things should look. So style sheets, the other part is the sheets part of it. And what that means um, is that we're going to be writing these separately from our HTML. They are not inside HTML. They are separate documents that we then include in our HTML. So let's start um, by taking a look at some examples. There's a site that I really, really like called CSS Zen Garden. And the whole point of this site is to show you uh, the variety of things you can accomplish with just CSS. So if you take a look here, we have some markup. Um, let's look at the HTML file. We can go ahead and open that up. So this is the core uh, file that every single page on CSS Zen Garden uses. So you can see it's pretty basic. We've got some headings, we've got some paragraphs, some links, some bullet points at the bottom. And then the whole idea of this site is that uh, contributors take this HTML and write their own CSS without changing the HTML at all. So you only change the CSS, the structure is the same, and you end up with different results. So here's one. And on the right side, we can check out a few others. And there's, there's a bunch of them on the site, and actually you can contribute your own if you wanted to. Well, let's take a look. So this one is radically different. Total different layout, different color schemes, fonts, images. This one is also very different. It has this nice loading animation, all done with CSS. You can scroll down, and we have this effect where um, our content scrolls, but the background image is static. We have this one, which is radically different as well. And we could spend all day on here. Um, let me just find one more, which is my favorite, which is a robot named Jimmy. We get this little robot that pops up and is spinning um, a starburst in the back. Also another scrolling effect. So I'm showing this to you so that you can see how powerful CSS is. It basically is the skin, as we talked, or the adjectives um, for your structure. It can change you know, a site from looking like this, and it can change it to look like this. So hopefully that's enough to get you excited about learning CSS. Our HTML sites so far have been pretty bland. We haven't had any style besides the default black and white styles. So next up, I want to talk about a general rule that every line of CSS that we write will follow. So this pattern here, um, it looks like this. We select something, so we're going to talk a lot about what actually goes there, but we'll select something like all H1s or every anchor tag inside of an LI. So we do something where we're selecting HTML elements, we're referencing existing HTML, and then inside the curly braces, we apply some styles. And they follow this key value pair format, where we have a property, colon, and then a corresponding value, and then a semicolon. So we can have one thing in here, we can have a hundred different properties that we're changing, um, but they always follow this syntax property colon value. So here's two examples. This first section is going to select all H1s. So again, we're gonna come back to how these selectors work, but it's gonna select all H1s on a page, and then it's going to give them color of purple and font size of 56. And then this next one down here, is going to select all image tags and give them border color red and border width 
of three pixels. So, you know, we're not always going to select all H1s and all image tags. We're going to have multiple videos on actually the nuances of selecting things. Sometimes we want to select tons of things. Sometimes we're doing one small element at a time. Um, so there's a lot of options there, but it always follows this format. We select something, curly braces, and then inside the curly braces, we have key value pairs that are actually just properties that we're changing. 